All right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode 41 of the On Air Advocate. We're at the On Air Advocate. We look to provide education, support, and empowerment for all of those with different abilities, mental and medical illnesses, and their caregivers. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Tammy Flynn, and I'm the host and producer of the On Air Advocate. And I am super excited that you guys are joining us this evening, or if you are catching it on the replay. Now, I am really excited because tonight we are actually wrapping up our chronic pain and pain management series over here at the On Air Advocate. And so I'm ecstatic to have back one of our regulars who is amazing, um, Miss Christy Kern. She is a licensed acupuncturist, a Reiki master, and the owner of her scene acupuncture, oh, community acupuncture. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's Sunday, <laughs> as we talked about. Um, she has her master's of science in oriental medicine and her bachelor's of science in nutrition. So with that, I would like to welcome you back. How are you? Me. I'm so excited to be here. How's it going? It's Sunday. Have we gotten all of our things done this week we were going to get done? Sure. <laughs> They're all checked off the list. We were just talking about that before this, like we're all going to be ready for Monday. So know that <laughs> we're getting prepared right now, right now. Um, so Christy, I know that you've been kind of following as we've had these three weeks of chronic pain and pain management, and I am so excited that you have your, you know, your own take from your profession to kind of lend to this, where we, you know, go into some of those traditional Chinese medicines and your, your three, two, one approach. And so I'm excited for you to share it with our audience tonight. Yeah, I'm excited too. Um, there are a lot of different aspects to chronic pain. Um, well, and I'm focusing on the top three. So um, let's just dive in. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> so for me, the three aspects that I look at for chronic pain and when I'm diagnosing patients and, you know, working with them, it's always mind, body, spirit. So mm -hmm. there's always the physical aspect, which is the body where you're in physical pain it's real right you know it's not just in your head although we can use your brain to alter that chemistry to change how you're experiencing your pain or what you're experiencing in life you can always change that um emotional there's a huge emotional component to any chronic condition um chronic pain wears on you in a way that few other things do. I mean, it really takes you down. I've had um, back pain since I was 10 years old. And so, um, and I threw my back out last week again, just to do research for this show. I thought I'd try it again and see what it felt like to be back in chronic pain, because that's another aspect of it. It can come and go. You can feel better sometimes, and sometimes you can feel absolutely terrible. And it's hard with chronic pain because people, it's not like having a broken arm or a broken leg, people can't see what's going on inside your body. So what you're experiencing from your outside world isn't always compassion. Mm -hmm. It's often like, what is wrong with you? Why can't you keep up? What are you not doing? You know, right. what is going on, right? And so that wears on you emotionally as well as physically. I mean, physically, you're already in pain. So um, emotionally, now you get kind of beaten down by your friends, your family. People who don't know you, you know, are like, right. you know, why are you parking in that handicapped spot? You don't belong there. You're, I call you that know. being judgy. <laughs> yeah, totally judgy, right? These judgy people around you and you're getting mm -hmm. slammed with it, right? So it takes you down and there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of depression um, that goes in hand in hand with chronic pain or chronic conditions of any type, you know? Right. Um, so it doesn't have to be pain. My mom had Parkinson's and she had a lot of um, depression with that as well because, you know, chronic pain, chronic conditions make it so that you can't do what you're accustomed to doing. When you right. live a pretty healthy life, or even if you haven't, you're still, lim it limits you. So right. here we are dealing with these emotions, which then bring you into the spiritual realm of Kind of in, in Chinese medicine, we call it a lassitude of spirit, where there's this, um, 
you don't feel like doing anything because everything you do is so hard to do. So you kind of just sink into, it's, a, it's beyond depression where some people will, go, will become suicidal or just not even care if they're alive. It's not necessarily that they're gonna take their own life, but they're just like, eh, if I stay, I stay. If I go, I go, whatever. Right. I'm in pain. I'm not enjoying my life. You know, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Why am I in all this anguish? And I mean, there are philosophical things that go with that that are from all these different cultures. I'm not going to get into that. But, um, you know, pain can also be a really great catalyst to get you to change your life. My pain caused me to search for a different way to live because I couldn't walk. I had such great back pain um, in 2003 that I couldn't walk away from the person who kept offering me acupuncture. So I finally said, okay, fine, go ahead. I'll have acupuncture. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to do for me, but I don't care anymore. I can't say no because, you know, I'm just sitting here. So she gave me acupuncture and um, I went dancing that night. So I went from unable to walk to going dancing. And because of that, I also recognized that I had to make huge changes in my life. Huge this life. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't just about the pain that I was experiencing was because for, you know, a lot of times we're taking these emotions that we're not expressing in life. And, um, you know, the stress that we're all under and um, cramming it as far down in our body so that we don't feel it. We we can't be bothered with that. We don't have time to feel our feelings. We've never been allowed to feel our feelings because we're not trained to do that. Big girls don't cry and boys certainly never cry. So then this emotional component just keeps tearing down the physical being and the spiritual aspect. Mm-hmm. So in my case, now, you know, so that, that's one aspect of it. So, you know, in my case, it was an emotional attack. I was living a toxic life and emotionally it was taking me down. So when I had acupuncture, I was put back together somehow. I don't know if they were magic knitting needles that she used. I don't know. But it was amazing. And I went dancing. And in all of that, there was this euphoria of, oh, This is how life could be again. I could be joyful and happy and I could be dancing again, you know, singing and dancing and having a great time. So there are all these aspects to this. And, um, you know, and that's what catapulted me into acupuncture because I said, oh my God, if this is what this does, I want to do this for people. Mm -hmm. Um, So it is actually chronic pain that changed. That brought you this career. Right, right. And then, and then into all these other, like, things that I've explored. So I've explored, a lot, you know, all the different, there are eight modalities. We've talked about this before. There are eight modalities of Chinese medicine. Um, mm-hmm. My favorite go-tos are acupuncture, meditation. You know, I'm not so good at feng shui, but, you know, those two are my core, um, right now because those have i've for me i've seen such great changes in my life right. and i can teach other people that very easily especially you know we'll do a meditation later i'll show you later we get to play it together Woo-hoo! <laughs> and that helps with the spiritual aspect so again when you get to this lassitude of spirit for you know i've experienced it before where it's this I don't know how to change my life. I don't know what to do differently. Um, And apparently I sent out like my bat signal to the universe saying, please send help. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. And here, you know, my neighbor was like, come on, I'll give you acupuncture. So um, I'm really grateful for that. Because you've seen the success out of it. And you've also seen not only the success with yourself, but with your patients that you work with as well. You know, now that you're in the career, you know, that you're in, you've seen that success, you know, from them too, being relieved of the pain, knowing that it works so well. Yeah, and without, you know, and then this is the, this is the number two part. So acupuncture works not by masking the pain and not by causing you an addiction, you know, like you can go to op- opioids 
I've been there, I've tried them, they didn't do much for me. Um, I wasn't addicted to them, thank God. But, you know, in that pain period that I went through, especially then, you know, my, my doctor hand said, here, try this, here, try this, you know. And I had all these pills and I was like, well, I, don't, I don't know what to do with these things. Because I couldn't work. I was a substitute teacher. I couldn't work and take those. Take those, so, yeah. Right? In and middle sometimes school. I think that's a challenge for some people if they are in such great pain, but if their finances can't support them taking the time off, sometimes they try to work through that pain without taking any type of medication as well and finding other avenues to relieve that because obviously you can't go to be a teacher or be driving in your car taking, you know, different narcotics and opioids and whatnot. Yeah, and I mean, I see a lot of construction workers, too, who come in on rainy days when they're not working or in winter because they can't drive heavy equipment and be on, um, right. you know, opioids. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's a lot. And so this is a great alternative to medication. And I was, as I was going through this, actually, I'm going to throw one more little teaser out there. Um, as I was going through this little list, I was like, medication, meditation, there's only one letter difference. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah. So when, you know, this breath work that we do, this ability for us to, I mean, breath is life. You can live without everything else. You cannot live without breath. Right. And, um, breath is bringing divine self to, together. It's that connection to, to divinity. So um, it's kind of the point of life, the purpose. Right. And so as we use that in meditation, as we use it, even, um, you know, one of the aspects of acupuncture, especially what I've seen in my clinic is that people go into this very deep meditative state while they're in a recliner with needles and or if they're on my massage table. And so this is um, a very powerful way to offer people who maybe have had no interest or experience in meditation before, they're experiencing it through their needle experience, you know, because it's um, this way of getting the mind out of the way so that you can heal yourself. Mm -hmm and connect with your inner self. Um, the research is showing that the acupuncture meridians, these energies of, of, or these rivers of energy that we use that are called meridians, are actually um, ion, an ion pumping system. And so it's, it's very energetic in that way, because, right, you're pumping ions. Right. So you've got your, if you go back to your uh, fifth grade, chemistry class or biology class and you look at your atom and your electrons and neutrons and protons we're pumping the electrons around right we're moving those things that's energy so when we talk you know it's so there's not this great big mysterious thing about acupuncture it's actually um been proven by western science a long time ago in that whole um, discussion of energy as atoms because everything is atoms and I'm off track I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> you're off of your three two one here I am I okay. you, we just we talked about this before it's like Sunday it's Sunday we're trying a, a new twist here let's do Sunday night <laughs> right Oh let's do Sunday night after we've all had a crazy week and let's bring it home but we're going to meditate later so it doesn't doesn't so it's all going to be good we'll it's be just yeah. So number two, where are we at with the two? With the two. So we have acupuncture as it's a non-opioid. It's an, you're not going to be addicted to it. Although, you know, there are people who really, really like it, but it's still not an addiction. Actually, acupuncture treats addictions. So um, for people who have had, and you know, this is, oh, there's the NADA protocol. Please don't ask me what that acronym is right now because I can't help you with it. Because it's, um, it's Sunday night. <laughs> Sunday night. <laughs> it's it's the <laughs> National Acupuncture Detoxification something. But um, it's, it's a five-needle protocol in each ear. 
and it harmonizes your organ systems from your ear. I mean, we are magic, our bodies, we are such magical beings. And so when you put five tiny needles in these five places on your ear, it works for PTSD, it works for addictions of any kind, including my wonderful addiction to chocolate. Um, and it just is this really magnificent way of getting you so that you can handle stress and the stresses of life and respond to them rather than react to them. So again, it's another meditation. I mean, it really is this other So this aspect. is something separate, like, you know, the acupuncture goes, is it go to the site specific spot or what's, cause you said there's like five needles in your ear. Right, okay, so there are, it's hard cause I know what I know, but you guys don't know what I know. So I have to remember that. So I'm like the five needles in your ear, <laughs> right. is that just acupuncture like that? Or is it more site specific or for specific conditions? You put it in the, specific spots. Right. So, so if we're talking about chronic pain, if we're treating, say, um, Crohn's disease, Crohn's disease causes chronic pain. Um, if we're treating that, it's usually body points. So that'll be on the meridians. And so you're right. Then it'll be, you know, these places on your body, different points, mm -hmm. however many you need, whatever. There's, you know, there are other really great things that help with it too. Gua sha, which is a, a scraping technique. It's like a massage technique. Um, cupping can help with it. So there are other aspects and that comes with pretty much any chronic pain to help draw that inflammation out of your body. So, you know, these um, other modalities, um, Gua sha is actually kind of like grandma medicine where, you know, your grandma would come in and say, oh, oh, you're getting a cold. And she'd take a spoon and she'd start scraping on your neck. Hopefully she'd use something as a lubricant so she wouldn't just scrape your skin off. And then all this, it's called sha, it would come up. It's petechiae. It, it, it causes your neck to get red or purple. And it looks like somebody beat you up. But actually it's just drawing that those toxins that are trying to attack you or, um, like lactic acid and those things that hang out in your muscles, um, it draws it up to the capillary level, you drink a lot of water, you flush it out. And then like if you're getting a cold, it'll stop you from getting a cold. Mm -hmm. But in the case of chronic pain, this will draw that inflammatory response up to your capillary level, you drink a lot of water, maybe have an Epsom salts bath or soak your feet in Epsom salts, and it helps detox, it helps draw that out of your body so that you're not experiencing that pain. Okay. as much. Um, Michael Phelps used it to um, like cupping. Everybody saw the Olympics and they saw Michael yes. Phelps with those big cup marks all over his back. That and was so that's that, just drawing the impurity out of the body basically. Right basically it's drawing the lactic acid out so he really stressed his muscles when he was I mean he let it all go right when he was swimming so then that helps him recover faster in between um, races. Okay. So and, and that's, you know, here we are, we're still trying to recover. We're always in this, this stress response in this world. I don't know why we make life so stressful. We really, it's, it's insane, right. but <laughs> we do it and we do it well. So we continue to do it, you know, and right. then we feed off it. And then our brains actually get addicted to those chemicals so that you have to do a lot of work if you want to break your fears if you want to break these old patterns, if you want to break this, these thought patterns that you get stuck in. And when you're in pain, you really get these, these thought patterns that it's really, really hard to get out of. And there was, um, I posted on Facebook tonight because I was fascinated by this um, study that had been done uh, um, for burn patients because um, treating burn wounds is apparently the most painful. And they were saying it takes so much of your energy to be in that, in facing pain, in that um, thought pattern of pain, right? You know, which we don't think of it as the thought pattern, but it is. It's, it's, it's biochemistry, it's brain chemistry. So when you're in that, it takes a lot of your attention to be in that. So they decided to try giving um, people something else to think about when they were having their um, wound care done. 
And so they created this um, very, very friendly, very, very cold um, penguin game, a virtual reality game. Okay. And okay. it's been extraordinarily successful. I, I posted the link on my Facebook page. And you maybe so you that, can drop it in the link below this live. Oh yeah, I can do that yeah. too. Yeah. From your from your Facebook page, from your because then they can okay. get to your Facebook and they can get to the link too. Okay, cool. I can do that. You'll have to tell me <laughs> do that after we're done. So it's this, but it's really cool because it really shows how your brain is involved, your thought process is involved in this. People always are telling me, oh, you're just using a distraction technique on me because before my arm hurt, but now you just put a needle in my foot. So my foot hurts. I'm like, well, your foot doesn't really hurt, but if that's what it takes, fine, I'll take it. You know, your arm doesn't hurt right. anymore. And the pain in your foot was very, very temporary. You might've felt a pinprick, but it's a very temporary pain. And so it, it, it changed their brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. Now, in Chinese medicine, um, there are, your entire body is found on your hands, your feet, and your ears. So with auricular acupuncture, which is the ears, which is a five needle protocol I was talking about, NADA, you can actually treat your entire body on your ears. So if you have low back pain, I mean, when I treat myself, I treat my ears. And I'll stick little needles. If I had any needles here, I'd do it for you right now, but I don't have any nearby. We need to do a show just with the needles. We talked about that one time. And now we forgot them again because <laughs> it's Sunday night. So, it's Sunday night. Let's not do it tonight. I might miss. <laughs> <laughs> but so the needles that go in your ear then obviously are a little bit smaller. They're not long or are they very long? It doesn't matter if they're long. Okay. It doesn't matter if they're long or short. It does the same. It's the same. It's just, it matters if it's, I'm trying to see if I have any in my bag here. Um, it matters. The gauge matters. You don't want putting a just huge like, gauge. Just like the gauge when you're getting your blood drawn or whatever, the size of the needle. Exactly. The size of the needle matters. The length doesn't matter so much. Um, so you were saying that you can treat all the areas of your body by, you can do it almost all through your ears, but in Chinese medicine, it's like it goes through your feet, your ears, and your hands? Well, you can treat all of your body on your hands. In Korean hand acupuncture, you can treat anything on your body from your hands. So um, this is your head. These are your hands, these are your feet. So if you're an animal, you walk like this. So these are the, so these are the palms of your hands, these are the soles of your feet. And every knuckle's a joint. So this would be wrist, elbow, shoulder, um, ankle, knee, hip, or ankle, knee, hip. And then this is your face. So you know if you have a headache, you can poke yourself in the head. Um, if you're having GERD, so all of your internal organs are in the palm of your hand where you can keep them safe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if you're having, say you're having acid reflux, you go from your finger mouth. Okay, I'll do it just like I do it at the <laughs> clinic. Here we go. I get to draw on my fingers. See, knew we were going to change this up to be a little bit, <laughs> I know, a little bit interactive tonight. Yeah, it totally helps with chronic pain. And I have used this so much. Um, actually, my sister is like, get away from me with your pen. Leave my hand alone. So I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh. you can see your smile. Oh, so this is, your, this is your this is your head right here. Your hands. Yep. And then this so, one's your um, hands. This one's your feet. Yep. And then and what, so, what? What are these two? It's your other hand, your other foot. Oh, <laughs> two hands, two feet. <laughs> Sunday night. <we're> getting you. <laughs> right. I got it. Head. Right. Hands and feet. So if you have a headache, you can poke around up here. Okay. If your eye is hurting, you can poke yourself in your finger eye. If you're having acid reflux, you know, things are coming up, mm -hmm. you direct them back down. So Just kind say, of like massaging in a downward motion? Yeah. But only go down, don't go up. If you go up, it could be bad. So okay. you go down really gently. You don't have to like mash your finger or anything. You can go <laughs> really gently. Um, say your power thumbs. thumbs. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> if you're having a problem with constipation, you can go here because this is where your intestine would be. Okay. So you go constipation, you go clockwise. Diarrhea, you go counterclockwise. They use this a lot for babies. Do we have, we have a chart on this? Yeah, I can show you a chart. You got to throw then, a chart up. <laughs> yeah, and then um, I'm going to grab a different <laughs> weapon here. So I don't really want to draw with green ink all over my hand today. So for chronic pain, let's say you have back pain. 
Mm -hmm. I treat that a lot. So I talk about it a lot. Or if you have scapular pain, you know, if you have that, like somebody stabbing you in the back feeling right here, these knuckles even look like your skin, like, right? They look like your, right. right? So if you start poking around in there, you're going to find painful spots, right. right? And so you can just take a pen, you can take something and you can just hold it there. You don't have to like jab yourself. <laughs> it's dental. You will feel it too, because if you really right. have pain, like um, I'm having low back pain right now. So let's see if I can find it. Oh, there it is right there. So I'm not pressing hard. Uh, I am kind of dehydrated, so it's going to go in there a little bit farther than it normally would. Mm -hmm. But as I poke here, my back is feeling better. So as I hold this now, the ex experience usually have, <clears throat> this usually takes three minutes. So okay. it's quite a while to hold it like this. But at some point, it generally feels like you're pushing harder on the pencil and you're not but your <clears throat> uh, that point is getting far more reactive in your hand and it's loosening up in your back. Okay. So that's kind of how it works. Now with hand acupuncture, when you put a needle there, it doesn't hurt as much, but if you're stabbing yourself with a pencil, it hurts. Right. And is it, is it <laughs> as effective if you just use like your fingers in between <clears throat> or is it usually better if it's something more fine, you know, tips? Um, yeah, you kind of want to find that point. And the other part of, I mean, you can use your fingers. People do massage there. Um, part of it is that um, I have found that my finger gets fatigued. Mm -hmm. You know, three minutes is really a long time to hold it. So, or I'll just kind of give up earlier. If I use a pencil, I don't give up as fast. I don't know. Okay, when you're when you're holding. But that's another great way that you can do some things to redirect, but it's actually, it's not just redirecting your mind, correct? It's actually, it's actually healing. Mm -hmm. It's actually healing. Um, when I was actually in acupuncture school, I had somebody come in and um, where I was working and she said, oh, my, my shoulder is killing me. And she'd had this shoulder pain for 20 years, she said. And I said, okay. So I grabbed, I don't know, probably a fork. I worked at a restaurant at that time. So I might've grabbed a fork, whatever was kind of pokey. And I, I got into that area, into that scapular area on her hand, and I just held it there for a few minutes, you know, the three minute thing. And she was like, that hurts. I said, well, you know, just, it'll stop in a minute. And then we started chatting about something. And um, then, you know, I let go of her hand and she never had that shoulder pain again. Oh my goodness. And she'd had it for 20 years. I mean, like it's, it's, we are, we are miracles walking this earth. Right. It happened to these systems. I mean, Korean hand acupuncture is super, super powerful. So to tap into that, I had, um, my friend's son was going through chemotherapy and he was getting mouth sores a lot. And so I showed him the, um, the, this Korean hand acupuncture. And he drew it all out in his notebook. He was like, 10 years old. And the next time he had to have chemo, he pressed on his finger mouth and it helped. Really? You know, the mouth pores weren't as painful. Um, they weren't, they didn't have, he didn't have as many. He healed faster. So he was really grateful for that experience, for that information as well. And it's something that you have the tools already with you. So you don't have yeah. to buy something, you know what I'm saying? You have your yeah. hand and you have either your other hand or, or a soft pencil or, mm -hmm. you know, something <clears throat> of that nature. And so it's easily accessible, especially like I am a migraine sufferer. And so to have like little things that you can do to help relieve it, you know, if you don't catch it in time or you're somewhere that you don't <clears throat> have your medication and stuff with you, that really, um, that even really if you do, you can this. still use it. Right. I mean, you know, you can use it for, um, acupuncture is great for preventing migraines. Mm. So I don't know how people live with migraines. I am the worst story. baby when I get a headache. I, oh, I think no. that, you know, it depends the kind that you have, but I think that <laughs> um, the biggest thing with migraines is you need to be ahead of the game. So you need to know your signals. Like I always say that I know the perfect storm that I can create 
You know what I'm saying? The, the perfect storm yeah. was amount of sleep, lack of this, doing this type of work and having all these layers, hormone layers, you know, come together that I know that the storm is going to brew, you know, and, it was, and there's a good chance. So, yeah. you know, as soon as that onset of it, what they always told me is that the, the minute you start to feel that feeling, that sensation in any way, shape or form, you take your medication. Um, and I used to not do that. I used to wait and then be like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. And now that I do, um, I'm able to, it, it's much better because I'm able to live with it. And it's usually then it never gets to the point of having to go to the hospital and the vomiting and all of that stuff. It doesn't get, um, maybe about twice a year, twice a year. I end up to the hospital. Like I don't catch it. I wake up out of my sleep already, already throwing mm -hmm. up and whatnot. So but no, it's good to have those tools, especially when we have lower back pain, headache pain, chronic mm -hmm. pain of, you know, any kind um, to take along with us. So using that as using the hand, um, mm -hmm. also like you were talking about using the different types of acupuncture with the needles can help sure. on your, because you're two different ways and in that will really can help resolve issues and really pinpoint right? The sections and everything. Right, right. And it's actually healing your body. It's not just, just it's not, you know, it it's is not just a relief. It's not it, there's, just relief for that moment. Right. There's relief, but there's healing. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's very different than taking an opioid or something that's just masking the pain. Mm -hmm. Because in truth, if that's what you're doing, you'll hurt yourself worse. Right. If you're masking the pain, you know, um, you're just, okay, great. I don't feel anything. So I'm fine. I'm Superman. I can do anything. And then, you know, pretty soon you break your back, you know, right. Or you end up um, with far greater problems than migraines, which right. is hard to believe because I can't imagine worse things than migraines, thankfully. Um, but this, because this is a system of healing your body and it's not adding anything to your body, the needles themselves are kind of directing traffic, right? Because we're doing that ion pumping system. So it's really just making suggestions to your life force energy, your chi to say, hey, why don't you go this way instead? Or let's spend a little time swirling around this needle so that you can feel really, really energized. So that you can be, you know, like there are some points that are, we call them vitamins on a needle because they're very, very strong powerful places to build chi and blood and that's our life force now what would building chi mean building chi is is um like it it oh okay so, yeah, so much on sunday oh, no here we go so <laughs> There, there is a lot of different chi that we're dealing with. This is why I'm just like, oh, this is a big question you just asked, even though it's not a big question, but it is. So like stomach 36, which is by your knee, um, is the, the greatest builder of chi and blood. So it's actually okay. activating your um, immune system okay. so that you're building your immunity. Um, I mean, we have chi that's like, our post heaven chi, which is our genetics, what we're given to come into this earth, right? Okay. Um, is <clears throat> the chi that we get from eating food, breathing air, drinking water, that chi we get, you know. So um, this is a chi that helps us build our um, immune system, helps us get stronger. Um, it's vit we call it, and we just call it vitamins on a needle. Okay. Okay. So, I got it. Okay. So we have our three, our two. Our two. And, and now we're to our one, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just spaced on it. Oh, I was going to show you this really great thing to do, but I showed you a whole bunch of other things to do. Oh, so we're actually like three, two, four now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. Four. Exercise. Are you doing it? Yeah, it's an exercise. And it's a fun one. And it's easy to remember because you get to play Tarzan. If anybody remembers the old Tarzan movies. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we have this gland right below our sternum here okay. called the thymus gland, gland the thymus gland. And um, it needs to be activated. It's part of our limbic system. We need this gland to be 
um, continuously helping us again with our immune system, with our endocrine system, um, with all that's going on in our bodies. If you want to help yourself with, with chronic pain, and again, this is not something where you're beating yourself so that you're black and blue. This is a, a gentle movement. Um, and so you just hit it like this, like Tarzan. Can okay. you see that? I'm going to put my clipboard down. <laughs> okay, put the clipboard down. I just want to make sure everybody can see it. So it's, okay. it's right here. All right, here we go, folks. And you can make the noise. You can make underneath, the noise. underneath, like it's in by your lung. Where are we going? It's here. Oh, it's right here. It's right here. Oh, like here. Yeah, your sternum. Right there, there we go. There we go. We do this, and if you want, you can make a Tarzan <laughs> noise. Ah! <laughs> right. This is the best. The vibration of that is also helping you heal. So this is what, it, what is it do, what is it doing for you? I mean, it's it's so, activating that, right? It's activating the thymus gland. But as you make music with it, as you make noise with it, you're changing the vibration of it, right? So, like, if you talk to Angel when she's doing music therapy, okay, um, she'll have you do crazy stuff. Like, I had sinus stuff going on, so she's like, "Okay, we'll make this sound." And she made, I, she's like, "Here, you, you got to sound kind of like a." Uh, uh, fire engine, you know, Woo and I was like, what? <laughs> so I sat there with her and all of a sudden my sinuses just started draining. And I said, oh, that's weird. But that's it. Vibrational medicine is powerful. And so that's why, you know, ancient medicine involved big drums and banging on things, drums and rattles. And we still use it today. At my clinic, we do special events where we do shamanic healing because it's so powerful and those things are you know we think of them as being uh you know too ancient and mm -hmm. oh they didn't know what they were talking about it's just a different way of saying things that we're saying now in a different you know we're using <laughs> we're using latin to say a lot of it to begin right. with it's a dead language right. right so it's kind of ironic quite honestly but these are the things you know Vibrational medicine is, is extraordinarily powerful. And that's part of what we're doing. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel so energized after doing that. I'm just like, what well, this I just wanted to say, I mean, it feels good. Like, I feel like we all need to go into Monday like that. Like, oh. Totally, totally. <laughs> like tomorrow morning when you wake up, that's just the first thing you need to do to get your Monday off to a good start. Yeah, that, and then, you know, um, Breathe. I was actually re listening to um, uh, an interview today and they were talking about um, self-worth and helping yourself with your self-worth. And so they recommended before you go to bed, write down three things that about yourself that you value. And I thought that that was extraordinarily powerful mm -hmm. to set that mindset before you go to bed. Right. I value these things about myself. So if you want to start changing your brain chemistry, if you're living with chronic pain and you're feeling lousy all the time, if you start before you go to bed to write down three things that you value about yourself, mm -hmm. you're going to change your life. Right. Right. Because you're setting that right before you go to bed. And then you wake up in the morning and you're like, hi, muscle. <laughs> Okay. Really? How do you go wrong? You know, I, you I feel like between away. the hand thing, tomorrow you're going to have all these people are going to be like doing this. We're going to be doing this. <laughs> okay. So in closing, I know you were going to kind of wrap us through now a meditation, a short meditation. Remember you said you were, so you got to, oh. right? <laughs> I did. Oops, I'm not just going to let her off the hook now. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's Sunday night and we're on here, we're being kind of thinking which one to do. Um, but I think that even in, in laughter, what I can say about chronic pain is that chronic pain and managing it, there is absolutely nothing fun about it. But taking your mindset to somewhere else, whether that be through music or doing different activities, you know, with your body, talking to others, listening to a show that you love. You know, my son suffers from chronic pain and we have from um, a sharper image, it's a digital box that it has 
15 different sounds on it. It's battery operated as well as it can plug in. It can be timed out. And whenever he is in pain, he turns it on himself. And he has learned after his full spinal surgery, we had it at the hospital with us. And it is awesome. automatically takes him to another land, you know? Fantastic. And so yeah. it's more being open, I think, to integrating those things. It's not going to take away all your pain. And I think this whole entire three weeks, what we've talked about a lot is that if you're at a 10 for pain, you know, you're probably not going to find something that's going to get you to a zero. You know, you're looking for things that can get you to a one, to a two, that can settle things down. And, you know, and sometimes it might be alleviated and flare back up, but it's something that you were born with, you know, for like some of the kids we talked to that have, you know, severe juvenile um, arthritis, that's something that they live with every single day. And so it's finding a number that you can be okay with in all different types of modalities. You know, and some of that does require sometimes some pain medication as well mixed in, Mm -hmm. but that you can integrate into that kind of making, it's like your medical toolbox, you know, your pain management toolbox of things that you can, that you can grab from. Um, So I think we don't need to, you know, just as we've listened to all these weeks is that we're trying to throw out so many different things out of there that we can put in our toolbox to take out and try. And so tonight we've got some pretty fun ones, which I love. (laughs) Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go on a live well, and be like, oh. Yeah. And this, this is a big deal to me because if you can get from a, a 10 to a 2 mm-hmm. and you can remember what that 2 felt like when you're feeling a 10, you can get yourself back there, mm-hmm. you know? And that is huge because if you're living a life of chronic pain at a 10, right, you kind of lose hope. I mean, you right. really do hope. So right. if you have all as many, and that's like, I just throw tools at people all day long. I'm like, here, this and this and this and this and this. Right. And I always think that my job is to give you as many tools as possible. You choose which one you want to use. Right. Or if you don't want to use any of them, that's up to you. But I, I want to make, or if you forget about them, just ask me again. Maybe I'll remember what I said. Maybe I won't. Right. But you'll do something else. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's this whole, it is, it's having all of these different tools and to right. say, oh, this, I, today I'm going to breathe. I'm just going to, I'm going to breathe and focus on that, you know, or, mm-hmm. oh, that's not working. Or even starting the journey of all of the diet modifications and eliminating different things and foods from right. your diet, inflammatory foods and tracking it. Um, but I think sometimes you need to separate and make sure you're trying one new thing at a time so you can figure out what works. And so then you're not going to solve the problem in a week because um, right. you probably didn't get the problem within a week. You need to then jot those things down, you know, over time and track them and then know what works. So then your toolbox is full of things that actually are beneficial for you. Right. There's also allowing yourself to feel your emotions. So if, for example, and, um, if you can sit with something, um, I actually have on my phone, um, an app that I use for tracking my emotions throughout the day. And it, it asks me what my emotion is, what it's associated with. And like, if it's an activity or a person or whatever, and where I'm feeling it in my body. Okay. And, and then it'll even offer me the option of taking a picture of what's causing that emotion. And so I use that because it helps me to figure out, um, again, you know, like I didn't feel like I had an intimate knowledge of my emotions. I would always think that I was sad when actually I was feeling anger. And I wouldn't allow myself to feel that anger because I wasn't supposed to feel angry when I was a child. So, you know, that's one of those things crammed into my back, that anger and fear that I couldn't feel as a child. So it's, it's helping me to um, explore my emotions and to feel them now and not project them at somebody. It's not that I'm going to now flip out at somebody, you know, but, oh, this is anger that I'm experiencing. And then I have a meditation that my teacher has taught me to help me, you know, feel that anger until, you know, sit with it until it transforms usually it transforms into tears and then it's released so 
those um that app as well when we get off this live maybe we can drop that below too maybe that app or and Ooh. i know do you utilize that com app i know i've heard um one of one of our other speakers that was on that has um graves eye disease a while back right at the very beginning when we launched um she loves that calm app she says this yeah. have you you've used that before too right i haven't used it but i have a lot of patients who do and they'll actually bring it into the clinic with them and they'll do their meditation on calm as yeah. they're having the treatment and it's beautiful but i mean i think that's one of the things that's changing the world quite honestly these apps that are offering us this ability to become present at this time. Most right. of the, most of the, I mean, Buddhists would say that life is suffering because of our attachment to outcomes or our attachment to well, pretty much outcomes. So it's that we have this attachment to, oh, you know, my friend and I had a fight. I don't know how this is going to end up, you know, like, right. And so you're attached to the outcome of that or, whatever and so now you have this pain you have this suffering because of this attachment mm -hmm. but um and we can internalize that and it can be physical pain you know people who have heart attacks often will say it's because of stress it's, they never say it's oh because you know <laughs> these physiological problems i have nobody ever says that they're like they're always it's always about stress it's always right. about some external thing some way that they're not um, experiencing their environment right. in a pleasant way. It's a non-expensive. Yeah. So we'll we'll add those below as well. All right. Okay. And so now we're ready. We're ready to go through the meditation. Whatever you're going to have me do. We ready? Okay. Pound it on our chest. Push on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I, you know. I think for this one, I was going to do a repeat of one before, but I think since I have this wonderful little happy hand. I'm going to do this one that actually um, a kindergarten teacher taught me. So this is um, breathing in. Am I supposed breathe. to hold up my hand? Do you need so to hold try? up your hand? And can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then you bring your finger around your thumb. You're breathing in and breathing out and breathing in and breathing out and breathing in. And breathing out and breathing in and breathing out and breathing in and breathing out i think our friend from mama's momentum she showed us that one too really <laughs> awesome so now we've gotten double the practice yes that's cool Did yes she have hand too she didn't have she doesn't have a smiley face hand. She does um she does energy for vibrant living. So she has awesome stuff. You need to go check her out as well. But oh. she was she was just showing us a few things to calm us. Like one time we used a chime and this time and then one time we did the Yeah. I think last time you were on we did the Did we close our eyes? I thought yeah. I might have closed my eyes. <laughs> I would love to go through that one again because that's my actually my favorite meditation. Okay. So if you close your eyes. Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes. And as you're breathing in, you breathe in, I'm so blessed. And you breathe out, I'm so grateful. Breathing in, I'm so blessed. Breathing out, I'm so grateful. I'm fall asleep, Katie. <laughs> I was like, I felt like I was in church. <laughs> like I shouldn't open my eyes, or I gotta keep my hands like that. Like I just felt like I was supposed to be following directions. <laughs> I very well could fall asleep because I got up at four. <laughs> I know it was a long day. Don't want you falling asleep. Uh, Although you know, sometimes there is the snoring meditation that happens in the middle of a meditation, and that's just because you need it. Snoring. <sighs> Okay, Brian. I'm in. 
I'm so blessed. I'm out. I'm so grateful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So all of those different things that we talked about, we're going to drop as many things as I can get her to figure out below when we get off of this live. <laughs> I've been trying to take notes. I'm like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> I think I missed a couple. Below and, and put some of that in the comments for everybody. I hope that you enjoyed um, the chronic pain and pain management series. Um, this next week over at the On Air Advocate, we are going to have more of a variety week coming up. So there's going to be all different things. So make sure to stay tuned and kind of look for the captions of who's going to be on because it won't be a focus week. Um, it's just going to be a variety week. Also, if you guys have not already hopped on over to the On Air Advocate community on Facebook, that is going to be launching June 1st. So make sure you've requested to be a part of that as well. And then if you would like to get any of our other podcasts, YouTube tutorial videos, or get connected with us in any other way, please hop on over to www.onairadvocate.com. And I know, Christy, we are also going to drop all of your location your is your website up right now or is it your Facebook that you that you utilize the most for people um, I, I'm most active on my Facebook page but I do have a website so okay. if you're looking for information it is on the website but okay. um, more interactive in the and you can contact me through either through either one of those okay so I'll drop that that will be right in the header after this so you'll have all those click throughs um, to get a hold of Christy if you want to spend some time with her I mean you can you can laugh like you see you can be serious you can laugh you can have fun you can sound like Tarzan <laughs> Good time. And if you don't live here in this state, I know that Christy is always open to sharing her knowledge and helping in any way that she can. So please always feel free to reach out. And then once we have the on-air advocate community going um, with everyone that's in there, we'll be able to throw out questions all the time right there. Cool. So with that, so with that I feel like we should go out with a, a Tarzan roar or something. I don't know for everyone to like know that no matter... <laughs> No matter what, you can handle whatever this new week is going to throw at you. Correct? Absolutely. Okay, are we ready? All right, We're should, ready. We, should we do it? Should we, should we go out with a, a Tarzan thing? Should we do that? Let's do it. Why yeah. Not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> All right, right here, right? Right. Okay. All right. Fun. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, are we supposed to do that? Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so much much fun, too. So if you're coughing, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so much fun as always, Christy. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging with us for the last hour. Hope you guys have a fabulous um, week ahead. Take care and God bless everyone. Good night.